Draghi puts forward proposals to counter Europe's rapid decline. If accepted, the cost will be 800 billion euros of investment annually. EU High Representative Joseph Borrell has arrived in Egypt for talks on the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The European Union has condemned Russian municipal elections held in the occupied territory of Crimea. Calls to reform a decades-old citizenship law have triggered debate in Italy. Former Italian Prime Minister and President of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, presented his report on the future of European competitiveness on Monday. The report has 170 proposals to increase productivity, enhance security and reduce dependencies while keeping the European social model intact. Draghi's initiative comes at a crucial moment for the future of Europe. The EU is losing ground as each passing year it becomes less able to compete with China and the United States in global trade arena. It's going to be a slow agony. We're becoming, and, and, and think about the fact population is declining and by 2040, 2 million workers a year will disappear from the labor market. So we're going to be a society that uh, basically shrinks Draghi calls for a minimum of 750 to 800 billion euro additional investment per year. This means increasing the EU's investment share to around 27% of EU gross domestic product. To achieve this goal, the European Union would have to issue common debt instruments one more time as it was done for the recovery of post-pandemic known as the planned next generation EU, which was also a 800 billion euro model. And the big question is, is there need of safe common assets? Yes, the answer is yes. While the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen seems open to the idea, some EU governments are likely to oppose it, making it very difficult to achieve. Overall, the suggested amount is twice the size of what Europe spent after the Second World War to rebuild. I think it's not very likely at the moment. Uh, we do not have a German coalition government that is in the position to make any progress or any moves in that direction. They are politically very divided and the opposition is also against it. Um, and we do not have a clear French political landscape that would um, build, help to build trust. So at the end of the day, joint borrowing really only works when you have um, you know, more trust among member states, which we don't. Draghi's report, which helps defining tasks for the next commissioners, also encourages boosting the European defence industry, research in innovative technologies and decarbonisation. According to Draghi, without action, Europe will have to either compromise its welfare, or its environment, or its freedom. The EU's High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Joseph Borrell, has arrived in Egypt for talks with Egyptian President el-Sisi on the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Their discussions will cover the EU's role in alleviating the human suffering caused by Israel's war in Gaza, as well as ceasefire mediation efforts by Egypt, the US and Qatar. Today, the most urgent thing is to make these ambulances to enter or to receive the wounded people. And that's why the European Union is ready to present their capacities, to offer their logistic capacities in order to reopen this border and to have the European staff deploy on the other side of this border in order to border to be open. Borrell spoke from the Egyptian side of the Rafa crossing with Gaza, where he is expected to inaugurate an EU-funded project to help Gazan children and their caregivers in Egypt. Borrell's visit is part of the EU's ongoing engagement mission aimed at preventing further regional escalation. He will also travel to Lebanon later this week to discuss the country's stability and its role in the wider Middle East conflict. The EU's diplomatic service has strongly condemned Russia's municipal elections held in occupied Crimean territory, stating the vote violates international law, the UN Charter and Ukraine's sovereignty. The EU does not recognise these so-called elections or their results in Crimea, the European Union External Action Service said in a statement on Monday. 
They are null and void and cannot produce any legal effects whatsoever. 83 elections spanning regional to municipal were held throughout Russia from September 6th to 9th. Areas included the Ukrainian-controlled region of Kursk in Russia, which saw the country's third highest percentage of voter turnout. The results, strongly expected to tilt towards Moscow-approved candidates, are slated to roll in by the end of September. Record high temperatures and low rainfall are having severe consequences across Europe. In Bosnia, soaring temperatures this summer have caused parts of some lakes to dry up entirely. The Bileća Lake is normally a source of hydroelectric energy in Bosnia, as well as a popular swimming spot. This year, critically low water levels broke new records, impacting both the energy and tourism industry in the Balkan country. Inače, gdje mi ovdje stojimo, voda dotoje, dođe i ovo sve, kad se poraste nivo vode, ništa se ne vidi pod vodom i baš je bude fina poraža za kupanja. Međutim, sad ove godine je baš drastično opao nivo vode i baš je nezgodno prijeći privačima i svemu. Međutim, baš izgleda kao da smo na nekoj drugoj planeti. In Poland, another record was broken, with the water gauge of the Vistula River in Warsaw showing just 24 centimeters on Monday after a hot weekend. Hydrologists had been warning for days that the river would reach its lowest levels ever recorded. Monday's reading broke the record from nine years ago, when the Vistula River level dropped to 26 centimeters three times. The issue of how to grant citizenship to immigrants' children born in Italy has long been at the center of the political debate. Italy's deputy prime minister and leader of Forza Italia, Antonio Tajani, has recently demanded a review of the current law, which makes the process hard to achieve. He has backed the introduction of the so-called use scholar and the possibility to grant citizenship to those who complete 10 years of compulsory education in Italy. While remaining a close ally of Meloni, Forza Italia's move has not been welcomed by the party's coalition partners. Amin was born in Somalia and arrived in Italy when he was four years old. After living and studying in the country for over 30 years, he's not considered an Italian citizen. Today, he's one of the promoters of the reform proposal. Sempre in regola, pagando le tasse, eh, da sempre mi ritrovo a essere straniero a casa mia fondamentalmente perché poi, come dico spesso, dell'Africa a me mi è rimasto il colore perché non, non sono mai sceso giù in, in Somalia. Non la... eh, alla fine eh, è come se eh, ti tagliassero una gamba, non so come dire, cioè sei limitato in tutto. Cioè, poi, fondamentalmente, essere italiani è. Eh, è un qualcosa di, no, che ti senti dentro, di cui sei orgoglioso, fiero. E, cioè io ho fatto per anni karate, ero una promessa del karate, ma non potevo partecipare a livello nazionale come i miei compagni. For years, Save the Children has carried out groundwork to help integrate children born in Italy to foreign parents. Noi in Italia abbiamo una legge vecchia e superata, che ha più di 30 anni, che era pensata per un paese di emigranti. Cioè questa è una legge che va a tutelare soprattutto i figli e i nipoti dei tanti italiani che andavano a vivere per lavoro all'estero. Il paese in questi anni è profondamente cambiato, quindi è cambiato nei fatti, è cambiato nelle scuole, è cambiato nelle comunità, bisogna che la legge si aggiorni. Salvini's League Party is against the reform. È scritto nel programma del centrodestra, è scritto nell'agenda del governo. Eh, due partiti su tre dicono e ricordano a Forza Italia che questo non è, stato un, non è stato un tema condiviso. Possiamo parlarne, ne parliamo da un mese, ne parliamo da quest'estate, però io oh, dubito che sarà un tema eh, inserito nell'agenda parlamentare. Dalle forze di opposizione, certamente. Non penso dai partiti che compongono la maggioranza di questo governo, a meno che qualcuno non si voglia porre al di fuori del programma elettorale per cui gli italiani ci hanno votato. Antonio Tajani and his party are determined to take the proposal to Parliament. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome.
The European Union must take a leading role following the exile of Venezuelan opposition leader Edmundo González in Spain, says Venezuelan journalist and opposition activist Carla Angola. The Venezuelan politician who won the 28th of July elections, according to the results of the opposition, has requested asylum in Spain. But according to Angola, it is not enough. Que Europa se sumerja profundamente en esto, que castigue a quienes han provocado que el presidente electo termine en el destierro, que haya sido desterrado, y que ya no se limiten a estas excusas. Este es el Palacio Presidencial de Miraflores, el despacho 1. Spain has coordinated González's trip with the government of Nicolás Maduro, but the Spanish Foreign Minister José Manuel Álvarez said there were no quid pro quos. Angola says exile benefits Maduro. Aquí lo que yo veo es que Maduro se ahorró el costo de apresarlo, por eso lo deja ir y lo deja ir tan rápido. Entonces, lo que esperaríamos los venezolanos es que se instalara un gobierno democrático venezolano en el exilio. There are calls on the European Parliament to stop seeing the situation as a matter of internal Spanish politics. At the moment, the European Union does not recognize neither Maduro or González's victory. Pero hay que ponerse por encima de las diferencias partidistas, reconocer la presidencia de Mundo González, que, que Europa deje de ser o deje de verlo de Venezuela como un tema de ideologías, ¿no? No es protegerlo nada más, es reco reconocerlo, es presionar en torno al castigo a quienes cometieron crímenes de lesa humanidad y hasta el exilio de un presidente electo. Hay que ver esto con carácter de urgencia. González no joins the list of Venezuelan oppositions exiled in Spain.